Hello and welcome to Homesteady As I Go. I'm glad to see you back. Uh, I just wanted to do a short video today. We're going to talk about us processing our rabbits. Um, if this isn't your thing, keep in mind you can do this with most, most meats. We can do it with chicken, rabbit. Um, we're not going to show you the butchering process. There's just tons of videos out there for that. I will tell you we do use a rabbit wrangler to process our rabbits. And my husband is just now, after soaking them overnight, um, in a small salt brine. So he had a little bit of salt to the water, let them soak, kind of leaches out all the blood. Um, he's now rinsing them one more time and then we're gonna grind them up. I just thought I'd walk you through that process. I'll also be canning um, a little later and probably running a rooster through my pressure cooker and doing a video on that. So I'm just going to turn my video real quick, give you a peek at what my husband's doing, stop the video, we'll come back when we throw it through the grinder to give you an idea of how that works. And here my husband is just uh, rinsing them. This is what it looks like. It's nice and clear and white after it's soaked through the night. We're going to come back over here. I'm going to show you my really simple, um, here's my uh, KitchenAid mixer. This is an off-brand grinder, and we use the small die on it when we do rabbit. We tried the large die, we, we don't like it. We like it to be smoother than that. I'm gonna give you a quick view of the brand we're using, um, because I know there's a lot of grinders out there, and some of them are really expensive, and this was gifted to me from my mother, and it works perfectly. And here is going to be the brand that we're using of grinder. And I know they ordered it online. If you're interested in, in finding it, I would just go ahead and, and Google the name. So I'm going to stop here, come back when we're grinding up, just to give you uh, a shot at what it looks like as it's grinding. Then we weigh it out. We freeze it in one pound um, bags. And we use it just like you would any ground meat for anything else. All right. This is from Seven Rabbits. And these are the smaller things that I couldn't get the meat off of that I'll go ahead and process through my pressure cooker and shred. So, I'm having some Go GoPro trouble. So, here is all of my meat that I could not have taken off with a knife. So what I do is I run it through a pressure cooker. Do you see this? This meat, there's delicate bones in here. And I can't, maybe you can, maybe you're the expert butcher, but I'm not. Um, so you do you, I'll do me. This is how I do it. When I have meat, I even do chicken this away. I'll even put a whole rabbit carcass in here when we're not grounding out meat um, to shred it. It shreds down. Look at this, it's beautiful beautiful meat it shreds down and then I'm gonna can this and come back and show you how I can it in this electric pressure cooker because I will only have probably four jars of meat uh, but, but I use a meal one jar with every meal I make so all right we'll be back okay so we're back and what I've done is I've already deboned everything and I'm showing you how I'm gonna can my stuff in here so I have some water some vinegar and I use one of these because mine did not come with a plate to go in the bottom mine actually came with a plate that goes up here for like hard boiling eggs and things so anyway you already have my cans um, this is my rabbit meat with my rabbit broth go nice and slow with my rabbit broth, my daughter's trying to help me film here. I've already debubbled. 
Um, I'm sorry. I'm assuming everybody knows how to can when you're watching my video. So this is my debubbler. I bought it at the dollar store. It's nothing fancy. And you're just going to take it and we'll do this here because I've got broth that has to be canned later. And let's just say this has meat in it. You would take, take this and you would do this kind of a number. Then you'd go ahead and do your rim with vinegar and a paper towel. You're trying to make sure you don't have any oil on your rim. Um, so that your canning lid stays. So, let me just tell you what I've learned about canning in my electric canner. Do not turn it on ahead of time. These suckers are hot. They will boil before you have a chance to put your jars in here and your jars will bust. So, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna put these in here and you can look down. If I actually was able to find a flat uh, rack that goes in the bottom, I could fit four jars, but because I have to use this steamer, um, that's what I have, I can only do three at a time. So what I've done is um, got a little water in there, got my, a little vinegar in the water, which helps keep my um, jars from clouding. Got this on close up top. You're gonna need to pay attention to your electric steamer. Um, and then on mine, let me just show you really quick. On mine, if I tried to can with this cook button, my cook button only goes to 30 minutes. And I have to can meat longer than that. So when you, um, this is mine, if you use this canning, it will allow you to go far enough for you to get what you need for canning. And I'm able to get my recommended time. I'm able to get my recommended time by using that. I already know that on my canner, the lowest pressure I can get is 20. Um, and I go ahead and I can on that. Mine doesn't go any lower than 20. Maybe yours does. If it does, then use the, um, the pressure that you do for your altitude. And so this is what I'm doing with the meat that I was on the small parts of the front legs, meat that was left over in the thighs I couldn't get with a knife. Rabbit bones are delicate and they're small. So by putting them into my pressure cooker, cooking them 55 minutes, um, taking, stop swinging boo, because people are feeling you do that like they're on a ship. My daughter's swinging, um, so, <laughs> or swaying. So um, by putting them in my pressure cooker, I was able to get every last little piece of meat off of those bones. And it's only three cans, three jars, but for us, that's three meals. Three meals to feed a family of four. That's not worth getting rid of. And I even ended up with two jars of bone broth. All right, so I'll come back to you. I'm gonna show you what we get out of the ground meat. And mind you, I only, we only butchered out seven Rex rabbits. Um, and we're getting quite a bit of meat off of that. So I'm gonna show you how much ground meat we ended up getting. Um, when we come back. All right, so we're back. We're finished. It's been a long day. We've done things in some shifts. Uh, we finished. Um, I still have my pressure cooker going with my jars in it. Um, and this is my ground meat. Um, we will freeze this. I'll keep it in the freezer for quite a long time um, before I think it's, it, it it's been in there too long and then I'll can it. I won't let it go bad, but we'll eat this ground meat before it ever gets close to going bad. Not to mention, I believe we're trading a couple pounds for some venison. So out of seven rabbits, I got three jars of shredded meat and nine pounds of ground meat. We don't add anything to our ground meat. We don't add any kind of fat or anything. And so it's just straight ground rabbit. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you learned something. Remember, if you don't do things the same way I do, you do you, I do me. You do what you think is best. I'm just sharing the way I do things. So thanks for coming by my channel. This is Teresa at Home Steady As I Go. Thanks for stopping by.